I was actually preparing a detailed scientific explanation for this video, but then I thought, nobody really cares, am I right? We don't care. Let me tell you. <laughs> so I decided to simplify it as much as possible while keeping it factually correct. Because honestly, I've seen many incorrect interpretations or very one-dimensional versions of what Boruto's new Rasengan Uzuhiko really is. So let's talk about it. The chapter begins with a Boruto creating a force around his body which seems invisible. I think it's invisible because first, Code wondered if Boruto was using his vanishing Rasengan. This means that Code probably doesn't see what we as readers do. He literally revealed already that he didn't see anything by using the word vanishing. This idea will become more clear when the effect of Uzuhiko starts to distort Code's perceptions. But first, Code tries to hit Boruto, but Boruto counters easily. Nothing special happens here, just insanely fast movement and reaction. Just a normal move by Boruto. However, this is still significant because Boruto's movement will change drastically. In fact, it seems Boruto wasn't trying to dodge, instead he was confronting Code on purpose, to establish a connection between himself, Code, and the Earth. After Boruto intentionally let Code try to hit him, he quickly blocked the attack. He then transferred the spinning power which seems to be invisible to everyone except the readers to Code. Currently the spinning power is limited to his arm which Code likely can't see. It rather seems that Code feels a spinning sensation around his own arm but doesn't notice it around Boruto's. This is why he mentioned the vanishing Rasengan instead of recognizing a rotation surrounding Boruto entirely. So I believe this illustrates a rotation that's happening, specifically it represents the Earth's rotation. This concept is usually invisible when we consider rotation purely in a mathematical way, focusing on details like the speed of the rotation. However, in this instance, the specific numerical details of the Earth's rotation are made visible for us, helping us to understand what's truly occurring, but as I said, Ko doesn't see it. And so since it's just a spinning sensation, it might not bother him. Who knows, it could even feel good, like a massage. Maybe Borto can move it to his back or something. If however that spinning was on Code's head, or even worse, inside his head, affecting his brain, that would be messed up. Even if it's just his arm for now, Borto is sure the fight is already halfway over because he's made all the necessary preparations. In fact, he believes Code is already halfway dead. That's insane. This means Bort has found a way to connect himself to Code. This makes me believe that my theory about Boruto becoming the next protector of Earth, essentially the next Hagoromo, might be true. It's not just because he's acting like the planet's guardian as we'll see when he talks about the Earth like an entity, wanting revenge on Code. It's also in the way Boruto fights. No one should be able to connect with another through chakra unless they know how to use Ninshu. And since Ninshu doesn't need finger signs or chakra manipulation, it's kind of like Shinjutsu, which fits to Atsutsuki's. This concept makes sense given that Hagoromo was half Atsutsuki, so for someone like Boruto after awakening Atsutsuki powers, and particularly when trying to avoid them due to Momoshiki, the first thing to learn will be something similar to Shinjutsu. It will be something that aligns more with the traditional shinobi path. You know, something similar to ninjutsu, but not exactly, perhaps the mother of ninjutsu. Ninshu. It's the art of connecting all beings through chakra just as Boruto connected himself with a planet and code. After all, Boruto symbolizes the last shinobi, so to speak. He won't rely solely on Otsutsuki powers. If you think about it, it's somewhat poetic and ironic. Kawaki, who wants to eliminate all Otsutsukis from existence, depends entirely on the Otsutsuki's power. This makes him a true Otsutsuki, not just in physical form, but also in spirit, which is much more important. On the other hand, the one Kawaki sees as the biggest threat to Earth, Boruto, follows the shinobi way, like a human but with the added strength of a Natsutsuki. He might even trace back his new power to the origins of ninjutsu. He is the supreme shinobi, the alpha and omega. When Naruto can be considered the reincarnation of Ashura, then Boruto can be considered the reincarnation of Hagoromo, even if it's not actually the case, but I think you get the idea. I just want to point out that Indra was not patient with Hagoromo's teachings. He wanted quick progress instead of taking the time to truly understand 
and Chakra. He chose to use his abilities as weapons rather than understanding the deep meaning of Chakra and everything. The point is Hagoruma could have used his deep understanding of Chakra to make a military force. Indra's approach was like early humans trying random things to make fire and then slowly getting better at it. Today we use knowledge and planning first, science, because it's quicker and works better. That's kind of what I believe Borto does. He first understood what Chakra actually is and how to sense it, how to feel it, how to see it. And then he manipulates it the way it's supposed to be, not this weird hand sign bullshit. By deeply understanding Chakra, feeling it and knowing how to connect with it, Porto doesn't need to depend on jutsus to produce specific effects anymore. This allows him to, for example, use the Earth's natural Chakra in motion connect it to himself and make it swirl around him like a Rasengan. He probably used the knowledge of the vanishing Rasengan to create that particular motion. And given Sasuke's knowledge of Hagoromo and all the research he did on Kaguya after the war, However, as an Otsutsuki and someone who wants to uphold the way of humans and shinobi, Boruto shall understand Ninshu on his own. It's not like he can't learn it without Hagoromo. Hagoromo just discovered it, or rather put a name on it. So anything Hagoromo could create should be at least as easily to understand for Boruto as it was for Hagoromo. This kid has an incredible talent, beyond anything we have ever seen before, period. He is the new Goat. The main idea of ninja is connecting with others through chakra. To my knowledge, only Naruto and Hagoromo could do this, since Bort is Naruto's son, spiritual link to Asura and an Otsutsuki related to Hagoromo, it's natural he would be good at using ninja. But it seems that Bort didn't just learn Hagoromo's connection technique, he took the whole concept to an entirely different level. Bort didn't just connect with other people like Hagoromo did, but he also connected with the entire planet. But there's more. It's not just the basic connection like how natural chakra absorption works. No, 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 no. Porto doesn't just gather energy. He also taps into the force of specific concepts like the rotation of the earth, which is supported by chakra. Chakra in motion. He acts like a link between earth and anyone he targets. It's like he himself is the earth or rather rotation, whatever. With this connection between Code and Earth's rotation through Boruto, their fight changed too. How Boruto dodged the first time was crucial to understand the difference between his first and second dodge. In the second one, it's clear Boruto isn't trying anymore. Something is different, something about his movement as Code described goes beyond simple movement. But it's not a jutsu, so what is it? If he's not moving normally, and he's not using a jutsu, then he must somehow move through space. He must bend the space around him, there's no other option. And it makes sense, because we see Code seemingly appearing to move right through Boruto, but not exactly. What I'm emphasizing is that the first time Boruto actively moved to dodge Code and confront him, establishing a connection between himself and Earth. This time, even though Boruto physically dodged, he didn't seem to do it with the same effort as before. It kinda just happened, without Boruto doing anything. In fact, it doesn't seem like he did anything at all. All he just stood there and code couldn't touch him. I believe this is because of the force created by the rotation of Earth that affects both of them at the same time as well as space around Boruto. This rotation causes the rotational force to glide close to the surface of Boruto's body, while also bending the fabric of space and time, just like the Earth does or any other big celestial object. Perhaps you have heard about a phenomenon called the dance between two black holes. It's really rare and truly really fascinating how two black holes, the most powerful distorters of space-time in the universe, can come close to each other, briefly orbit or dance around each other and then move apart without merging. This happens despite the tremendous gravitational pull. It might seem illogical at first, but it occurs due to the way they bend space-time. What we see is not really what is happening. To us it might look like they have actually touched each other, or even fused for a second. But in reality, they may not have. We don't know what happened. So it seems they simply entered the region around each black hole where space is bent due to its gravity creating an effect that makes it seem like the black holes pass right through each other. This is just an illusion caused by the bending of space. We can't completely understand how space bends around them, what is really happening within that bent space, or why their masses didn't collide, or how much distance was bent. 
we don't know, so we can't determine how much Boruto bends the space around him, however we do know that the Earth does this. And since Boruto seems to represent these forces in human form, he must do the same thing. So we don't know how much space is truly between him and Code. It could be a few meters, it could be miles. To Code, it seemed like he was heading straight for Boruto. But as he got closer, the space around Boruto could have expanded more than what Code's eyes perceived as the actual distance between him and Boruto. In simple terms, you could say that Boruto can create his own solar system, so to speak. But in a very primitive manner, of course. In this system, he has other celestial objects that he can select. These objects are then connected to his rotation and gravitational force. This rotation makes it impossible for any target which is considered a celestial object in Boruto's theoretical solar system to hit him. Just like the moon, for example, can touch the Earth. It's also crucial to note that although Boruto uses the same rotational force as the Earth, his rotational axis is also smaller and with that, more effective in combat. It's likely that the speed of rotation remains the same as the Earth's. This also means it's much more powerful because Bortes condensed the Earth's vast energy into one person, himself. To put it briefly, after Borte hit Code directly, he not only connected his arm to himself and the planet, but also to Code's entire body, including his brain. This is very important because the brain has specific areas and fluids that help our bodies move and function in three-dimensional space, especially on Earth. In case you didn't know, we are moving extremely fast around the sun. And at the same time, we are also spinning rapidly on our axis. Scientists even believe that our whole solar system is moving through the universe with the sun. So in a way, we are moving in three different directions at the same time without noticing it. So of course, code is confused as because his perception changed entirely. But there is one or rather two more movements that play a part in the powerful effect that Code is now experiencing. You might have observed as mentioned before that the moon doesn't crash into earth even though there's gravity, a lot of gravity. Similarly, the earth isn't pulled into the sun. There are many reasons for this but it mainly comes down to how these celestial objects use their force to bend the space around them through their mass and the rotation, affecting how things in space behave. While the Earth orbits the Sun and rotates on its own axis, this process is accompanied by another movement, a slow wobbling motion called precession which is influenced by the gravitational force mainly coming from the Sun. It's a gradual shift in the orientation of Earth's axis, causing the position of the poles to change over approximately 26,000 years. But there's one more small movement mainly influenced by the Moon, called mutation. This is a smaller motion. Mutation causes periodic changes in the tilt of the Earth's axis and the position of the star, sun and moon in the sky. It's a subtle but much more noticeable periodic shift that occurs over an 18-year cycle. Even though these wobbles are rather long-lasting, Bort is much smaller than the Earth. So Code feels the wobble much more intensely. It's all about the size difference and the adjusted ratio. The Earth is approximately 7.5 million times bigger than a human. For Boruto's size, the normal daily rotation would result in 68 rotations per second. The small wobble, which is mainly caused by the moon, would happen throughout every minute, constantly. And the big circular movements, which is mainly caused by the sun, would occur over a period of a whole day. So the rotation will cause a constant speed sensation making anyone unable to stand properly on two feet, let alone fight or coordinate every movement of their life. The small wobble will cause a general state of confusion that affects a person's immediate orientation at every given moment, non-stop. And the big wobble will cause long-lasting dizziness throughout the entire day. The key thing to remember is that all these forces are coming from Boruto, not the Earth. That's why it looks like Bort is using some kind of technique on code. In reality, these are the forces code feels coming from Boruto, through the Earth. Normally, he will feel these forces from Earth, but on a scale that's 7.5 million times less severe. Naturally, this is having a terrible effect on code. In fact, he will die if Boruto doesn't stop it, and it looks like no one else can help. 
But that's enough for today, I'll be going over the rest of the chapter and parts over the next month, so let me know what you think of this theory, a chapter review, call it whatever you want, and let me know in the comments what you want to see next. Is there any topic you would like me to cover on this channel, let me know. And of course, to support this channel, please leave a like and if you want to see more Boruto content, then subscribe with the notification bell activated for more Boruto content and much more. Thank you for watching and see you next time, bye!